Hello everybody and welcome back to Arts and Girl Gaming. My name is Heather and I thank you for joining me for Planet Zoo. Today is November 5th, 2019 and Planet Zoo was officially unleashed onto the world and video games as we know it will never be the same. Okay, well then maybe that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but Planet Zoo is here and I am so excited. <sighs> Let's jump in and make an avatar. So you guys, I'm replaying the Goodwin House scenario. Uh, I did it through the beta process. I'm doing it now at launch and I just wanted to see what's different in the nearly a month since it's been back in the hands of the developers and uh, it looks like not a lot ch has changed in the character creation. They're all still pretty ugly. Um, <laughs> not my favorite avatars that I play with. They're interesting looking, but you know, not a lot of change from Planet Coaster to Planet Zoo. And it's just kind of disheartening to me that the overweight avatars have less clothing options, less hairstyles. It's kind of like, eh, you know, if you're a thin woman or a teen, you have a, a thin woman or a thin team, you have more options than if you're an overweight teen or an overweight woman, you have less options. I don't know why that is. I think this is 2019, almost 2020. We should have the same options for all body sizes. That's just, that's just my thing. And I'm just saying it. But I got my avatar created. I went with a teen girl because they're the least ugly of all of them. And uh, yeah, so let's jump in and check out the scenario because we're not here to look at our avatars anyway. We're here to look at the animals. Let's do it. All right, so I'm gonna start with career mode. And we're going to go all the way through all of the scenarios, starting again with a Goodwin house. Ah, hey, yo, at Hema too. Yeah, uh, yeah. Oh. oh, oh, sorry about that. I, I, I have a habit of <sighs> slipping back into the Planko language. <laughs> it's good to finally meet you in person. I'm Bernard, although I insist you call me Bernie. The only person who calls me Bernard is my wife. <laughs> and even then, only when I've tracked elephant dung into the carpets. <laughs> As you know, I own several zoos, but I always like to show people the ropes here at my home. This is the first zoo I ever opened and a source of great pride for me. And prides, thanks to a lion breeding program we ran in the 80s. <laughs> but we're in the middle of a big renovation, and that's where you come in. Sadly, our old contractor had to retire after developing a fur allergy. Uh, poor devil kept sneezing his dentures into the lion habitat. So, it's up to you to finish everything off. Don't worry, though. I'm not completely throwing you into the deep end. My head keeper, Nancy Jones, will be lending a helping hand. Oh, she's a hard worker. And she'll expect you to be, too. But I'm sure you'll get along like a house on fire, or even better, <laughs> one that isn't on fire. Less shouting that way. <laughs> Hello there. From that rosy, fresh face of yours, I'm guessing you're Bernie's new hire. <laughs> Good. Now, I hope you're ready to ditch your diploma because we're about to get really hands-on. But before we begin the real work, how about we familiarise you with the zoo by learning how to fly around it and visiting some of our beautiful animals? We'll start by popping over and having a look-see at the grizzly bears in their habitat. Did you know that grizzly bears, also known as Ursus arctos horribilis, can hibernate for up to seven months a year? <laughs> oh, but then again, given the chance, I think a lot of people would do that too. <laughs> Select one of the bears and you'll bring up its information panel. This is where you can find out all kinds of information about your animal. The most important thing being its overall welfare. 
You'll learn more about animal welfare today as we go through your objectives. But for now, let's enjoy this magnificent animal. Why don't you select the camera at the bottom of its information panel? Okay, select it right there. Oh See now, this is a fantastic way to get a close look at your animals. You can also get this view of an animal by simply double-clicking on it. Okay, when you're ready, let's pop over to the other side of the zoo and take a look at the lions. I've marked their location for you to find. All right, if I must leave these gorgeous creatures, at least I get to go look at lions. Let's go. Panthera Leo Leo. All the West African lion to you and me. Lions are the most social of the big cats, and there can be as many as 40 lions in a pride. Although prides of that size are pretty rare. As Bernie would say, those lions are awesome, <laughs> which is precisely why I handle the training instead these days. Anyway, how about we get started on those objectives? Come on, let's head over to an empty habitat and see what needs doing there. Oh my gosh, these animals are the most magnificent rendering of animals I have ever seen. They are so lifelike it is almost insane okay let's go find our habitat oh there we are as you can see it's a lovely space for animals but it's missing a certain something well two somethings warthogs <laughs> so i'd like you to adopt a pair of them to adopt animals we need to open the animal market which is in the animal trading section okay animal trading there we are a pair of perfectly splendid warthogs for our zoo just click on them and select adopt from the side menu normally the animal exchange would be full of animals but i've emptied out the market while you learn how it works <laughs> the last thing i need is you accidentally ordering a dozen elephants i mean a dozen elephants that'd be crazy when you adopt an animal it's automatically placed in the trade center where they're held until you're ready to move them into their habitat which <laughs> as it happens you are so how about you move them into their new home I can do that i can send them into their habitat <sighs> I might be a zookeeper after all. When you ask for an animal to be moved into a habitat, your caretakers will go to the trade centre, collect your animal and deliver them to your selected habitat. I've marked the trade centre's location, so let's go and watch the caretakers in action. Okay, let's go find those caretakers. Where is it marked? Why do I not see it? It's... Where is... Oh, there. There it is. Well, as you can see, those caretakers don't hang about. They'll move those animals to their destination as fast as possible. Of course, normally we'd have to place the animals into quarantine before moving them into a habitat. But I am assured by a person of good standing that these warthogs are in the very rudest of health. Right, let's get the warthog's habitat finished up so we can keep them nice and happy. You see, each animal in the zoo has an overall welfare statistic, basically how happy they are. And that overall welfare statistic is itself comprised of four different areas. Nutrition, social health, habitat and enrichment. Luckily, if you select an animal, you'll bring up their animal welfare information panel, which we saw earlier, where you can see how they're doing. That way, you'll know exactly what areas need to be addressed. Don't worry if that's a lot to remember. You can always check the Zoopedia for more information. I feel like I'm going to spend a lot of time in the Zoopedia. Let's start by making sure we're taking care of the warthog's nutrition welfare. To do this, we'll need to place a food station and a drinking station. Now, each animal requires a different type of feeding station. And for the warthogs, it's a small feeding trough. So let's add one of those and a water bowl. I can do that. I can give them food and water. I won't let them die. That is my ultimate goal with this game, is don't let them die and don't let the animals eat any of the humans in the zoo. I think that's doable. Animals also require stimulation to keep them happy. Let's add a lovely mud bath for the warthogs to roll around in. <laughs> that bath will count towards their enrichment welfare, specifically their toy enrichment welfare. There you go, my little babies, a mud bath. Oh, nice work. You've got a knack for this, I see. Now, our contractor had to leave in a hurry, so this place is in a feral state. Unfinished thingamajigs and watsits all over the shop. But the first thing we need to finish is the ostrich habitat. It's over near the hippos. Let's go find it. 
gonna get ourselves small. Oh, before we actually start building our ostrich habitat, let's pause the game. Just click the pause button in the bottom right corner. Pausing is so important. I learned the hard way. If you don't, animals can die. Ah, that's more like it. A quick break. Sometimes it's a good idea to pause the game whilst you're doing something which requires your concentration, because it'll stop the zoo spinning out of control while you're looking the other way. Let's keep the game paused while we get this ostrich habitat built. Okay, job number one here is to add a habitat gate before we complete the barrier. Every habitat needs a habitat gate. After all, how else would the keepers get in and out? <laughs> Just make sure it's hooked up to the path so the keepers can reach it. I can do that. Right! Let's complete the perimeter barrier so we can adopt us some ostriches. I've marked out an area for you to use, so I'd like you to finish off the perimeter using the brick barrier. Perimeter complete with brick as requested. Good work! Remember, before you can place animals in any habitat, it has to have a full loop of connected barrier. Now, you've probably noticed that guests can't actually see into this habitat at the moment. At least not without a stepladder. But seeing as they're banned, I'd like you to select a piece of barrier and swap out the brick for a glass barrier so the guests can see in. Easiest way to do this is delete the portion you want to change to glass and then connect it using the glass because I can figure it out otherwise. If you know a secret, leave it for me in the comments. There we go. Adding in more windows gives guests even more opportunities to see the animals in a habitat. It's always best to make sure the guests can get a good view into a habitat from the path they're walking on. Because it makes them happy. And because this would be a pretty terrible zoo if they couldn't. The last thing we need to do is to add a donation box. You see, when guests enjoy the view of an animal, they'll make a donation. Just make sure you put them in easy-to-reach places like near a viewing point. Donation boxes are one of the main sources of income for the zoo, so make sure you remember them. Played the beta last time. That was the one thing I kept forgetting were the donation boxes. Don't forget them. Now, before we adopt our ostriches, you should click the play button. After all, if the game's paused, then so are our caretakers, which will make it a bit tricky for them to deliver the ostriches, eh? By the way, as well as pausing the game, you can speed the game up by clicking on the fast forward button. It'll run everything at two times and five times faster. It can be useful, especially if you're waiting for money to accumulate or for animals to be delivered to your habitat. Personally, I use it when I'm waiting for a brew to finish. All right, you've finished the habitat, so it's high time we adopted those ostriches, don't you think? Let's get four of them in here. Okay, animal trading. And then animal market. There's our four. Adopt. 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 And last but not least, adopt. Fukiana. Fuka. 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 Yeah. I can't even say his name. Fukaina. While we wait for them to be collected by the caretakers and brought to the habitat, you should get it ready for them. Add a suitable feeding station, water station, and an appropriate food enrichment item. It's often best to place things like enrichments and feeding stations near to the habitat perimeter so guests can get a really good view of the animals. Probably need to put in more glass into this habitat than just this one little window. I'll have to go back and do that after um, I'm finished with the scenario because ain't no guest going to be able to see much of anything through that little teeny tiny window. And this habitat is ginormous. Oh, good to see the ostriches have somewhere they can really stretch their legs. Did you know they can actually run at 43 miles per hour? Oh, oh, heaven forbid they ever escape. <laughs> the speed camera finds alone would bankrupt us. <laughs> well, Bernie certainly seems impressed. Did he do his speed camera joke? <laughs> Every time we get an ostrich. So, now we've made the ostriches' lives a bit better, let's do the same for the keepers, shall we? We will get to that in our next episode, but for right now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up Goodwin House Part 1 
then we got the bronze. That's awesome. We got some really fun animals in the zoo. This scenario is very similar to the original playthrough uh, during the beta, and I'm excited to see if the second and third pieces are as well. So I hope you guys will join me. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know you watch. And I would love to hear your thoughts and comments about Planet Zoo, so please leave those for me in the comments section of the video. Uh, I'd love to talk to you about this game. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. I'll do my best to answer them. And I can't wait to just keep doing more Planet Zoo videos because this game has one I have waited for for such a long time. And the fact that it is here in my grubby little hands just makes me extremely happy. And I look forward to sharing that happiness with you guys. Until next time, have a great one.